<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cultural Awareness, the podcast that allow you to travel across the world. All of this from the backseat of your car, the comfort of your home, or maybe your neighbor house. Who knows? Wherever you are, welcome. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm your host, Big Steph. Hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of Cultural Awareness. You are very welcome. Oh, this is your man, Big Steph. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you and welcome to Cultural Awareness Podcast, man. So today we are going to talk about something that uh, I find it that we all have in common, right? We all have friends. So let's talk about friendship for a little bit, right? So do you trust your friends, right? If they are your best friend, like whatever friend you you have, like, do you actually trust them? Because this is 2021. And remember, on my last podcast, I wish you well, right? And I still wish you well. But I hope to, that you can actually understand that you have to change your circle. You have to change the people you work with, the people you mess with, right? You can't just mess with everybody anymore, especially if you are trying to get to that victory lab, right? To that success or that dream that you wrote down last time when we talked in my podcast, right? So in this podcast edition, I'm going to tell you a story that will allow you to know why you should be careful about people you choose as friends, right? Really, what is friendship, right? Because in in Africa, mostly in the Bantu culture, like they are friends that become family. They become your brother. They become your sister. You know, they become your the best man at your wedding because you guys have that uh, special bond. That's you know that special friendship. That special unity. There's like a spirit that links you guys together. You guys were meant to be friends on this earth, and you know that. Wherever, you know, it's like a soldier when he goes to war and he knows he has to trust that his teammate or his fellow soldier or classmate or uh, worker or whatever you want to call them, his brother, like they like to call it, has his back, right? So, do you trust your friend? Do you think your friends have your best interest in mind? Because you have to start asking yourself those questions because there's no point of... Uh, you know, having some friends that you cannot count on, you know. So if, I know they say that it's better <laughs> that it's better to walk with a devil that you know than an angel that you don't know. But that is not necessarily true at every time. Sometimes you just need a change. Sometimes it's better to walk with the angel because that you don't know, just because he hasn't done nothing wrong to you, right? You know what the other person is capable of, yeah. It's true you don't know what the other person is capable of, but the point of the point is you have to make sure that you choose the right friends and you also have to uh test your friend. Friendship friendship is tested. Just like in Africa we test relationship. We also test friendship. You need to know that your friends have your back in case things go right or left. You know what I mean? You don't want to be there and rely on some people that as soon as something goes down, they will throw you under the bus. Like, they won't pick up their end of the slack. So, that being said, this is the story of a young lady. A young lady that has her best friend, right? Her best friend is living in a uh, poor condition, right? Her best friend was struggling. She was struggling to put food on the table just for her because her best friend is single. But the young lady that is telling the story is actually married. She's married uh, about like uh, she's married for about like, I believe she's married for about like a couple year. Oh man, this is not very professional. We having the sport app here, but hey, sorry about that. I just like to walk whenever I can. So. The young lady is having a problem because uh, she's telling us the story on uh, how she has her best friend. Her best friend is married. She was struggling. She didn't have no money. She moved to a new city to meet with her best friend. So she had her little apartment. And the crazy thing is I'm not going to say anything until the end right so i'm just going to tell you who is telling the story the the uh, the lady that is telling the story is she moved to this new city to see her best friend and while she saw her best friend and everything uh, she was able to meet with her best friend and her husband and then in front of her best friend 
her the, her best friend husband asked for her number, and so she didn't think anything of it. So you know, obviously she gave uh, she took the number in front of her best friend that is Mary, right? So she took her best friend man's number in front of her, which at the time she. Anyway, I would just go ahead and keep telling this story because it's making me hot already. You know what I mean? So she takes the number down and she give her number to the man, right? And she said like a couple of weeks went by and that man out of the blue one day started testing her and asking her what she's doing. If they can meet up, he wants to talk with her and whatever. So she was like, oh, after many time of repushing it, she finally said, okay, if you want to talk, let me mix at uh, such and such bar. They went there and they met and she said they met and they started talking and then it went on and on and on and they started drinking and they... Uh, ended up in a hotel and she slept with her best friend husband oh she first said that oh uh she doesn't really recall what happened she just woke up she know that they had they had sex and you know after that it kept going on like they had many more other occasions where they met and have sex at hotel or whatever and her husband best friend uh, her best friend husband, should I say, is, uh, was uh, giving her money, you know, to take care of her. And he found her a place so, since she just moved in a new city. And she said, that is not the problem. So I was like, well, what is the problem then? And she said, the problem is now she doesn't know what to do because she's starting to, I'm guessing she's starting to have feeling for her best friend husband. And on top of that, she's pregnant. And she doesn't know what to do. And she's writing to ask, you know, what kind of opinion, like, you know, advice and things like that. So, okay, now you know the story. You you hear it, right? She slept with her best friend husband. And now she's pregnant. Her best friend is not aware of this. So she's still not aware of this. Maybe she's going to find out. But, she's, but anyway, we don't give names. So she's still not aware of it. And she's wondering what she should do because she doesn't know how to handle the situation. Should she tell, should she tell her best friend that she's pregnant by her husband? Or should she just keep it on the load the way it is and just keep grooving the way they are right now? So she's asking for advice. Well, this is a typical story of be careful of who you choose as your best friend. So now, I'm here to say, like, most men, I'm not saying that all men, I say most men at one time will step out, right? But, if you got to step out, man, come on. In Africa, they say you don't shit where you eat. Come on, this is right in your backyard. You can't go ahead and step out with your wife best friend that hurts them more than when you you know i guess go out with somebody that they don't know like it's it's still you know hurt but it's different because at least it's not somebody within their circle so but the thing to me is this what i find it fascinating is uh when you first say that when she first says that oh she woke up <coughs> At the hotel and like, you know, she didn't know what had happened because they had drank a lot. And for some reason, she also said that they, they kept meeting many more times. That tells me that the question of rape is out of the question, right? So there's no more rape there because it happened many more times after that. So you guys met in that time, you were now conscious and you were eating and you were taking the money that her husband or your best friend husband was giving to you so you can, you know, I guess, take care of yourself. I get it. You move into a new city, is tough and everything. But your best friend? Come on, man. Like, you you couldn't find anyone else? Like, your be you, like, so that is a typical case of jealousy, you know? Sometimes when you have something, <clears throat> you have to know how to appreciate what you have. Right, you have to know how to appreciate what you have. And in Africa, they say, "Do do not, and you never do this. You do never, like you never sleep with family's member of your wife or her best friend. Like those are no go. All her friends, like they say, if you want to step out, go far away where your wife is not gonna find out because what people don't know won't hurt them. 
Now you create a situation where she's right here with her best friend. And she's pregnant. Oh, I forgot about that. And she's pregnant. She has a child on the way by you. How do you explain that to your best friend? That is one question. Um, like, you know, I, I don't understand. How do you explain to your best friend that, like, oh yeah, I'm pregnant. Who's your, uh, baby daddy? Oh, it's your husband. Like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this this woman better run far far away from her best friend because the day her best friend is gonna find out, yo, it's, it's, it's gonna be some trouble. It's gonna be some like they say some furniture moving, you know. So you don't do that, and your best friend trusted you and you broke that friendship, right? You slept with her husband. That is not cool. That even you, somebody did that to you. That wouldn't be cool. You could have gone with someone else. Not her husband because she has a family and she took you in. That is the sad thing. She took you in when you didn't have any place to go. You stay a little bit with them. And I also blame the, not blame, but I also question the lady. How can your husband take your best friend number in front of you and you let that happen? How is that even possible? You should never do that. You should never take your bed. I mean, you should never even let him. Like, yes, you guys are best friend or whatever, but you have to protect what is yours. What is yours is your husband. You should not let him take another woman number unless it's like family member or whatever. And even sometimes family member, you you know, it's a little skeptical. So you should, even your best friend should never, ever, ever have your husband number. That means that now they can have some dealings going on between them, which is the case right now, that you won't be aware of. You have to be careful of who you choose as your friends because your own friends are going to be the one that will stab you in the back. Why? Because the enemy never comes from far. The enemy always comes from your circle. Like someone cannot just see you on the road and start hating on you. It has to be somebody that you know that will hate on you. You know what I mean? Jesus was killed by his own people, not by people coming from a different land, by his own people. That shows that it's always somebody that knows you, that will hurt you, that will harm you. So let me know, what do you think about the story? What should the young lady do? Because to me, I first think that her and the the husband, they are very, very uh, at fault here. You know, like we, we don't do that. The husband, like he, she could have chose any other man. But greed, jealousy, he's giving her money. That you decided to break that friendship by sleeping with your own best friend husband that is number one number two in africa they say when you have something don't talk about it right when you have something you have money you have wealth do not talk about it so uh some of our elders who heard the story because we have some elders that hear the story so they say this that we also have to question the the man wife I was like, well, why should we question her? She has nothing to do with it. They say, it looked like the husband has a lot of money, right? I say, yeah. They say, well, you have to question if the fact that this best friend, like um, the wife in question, was bragging. Like, oh, my husband get me this, get me that. That creates jealousy in some other woman. Like, because not everybody have the same opportunity to have something, you know, or a man that is going to take care of them. Like, People are struggling out here. These are hard times. So people sometimes will do some things that they never thought in their life they will do just because they need that money. They have a family to take care of. So the question is, what was fr- her friend telling her? I'm talking about the married woman. What was she telling her new best friend that just came in town? Oh, my husband like to do this to me. My husband like to do this or uh, do that to me. Like he buy me this, he buy me that. Oh, I can help you with that. And then it, that create a sense of jealousy in her best friend who just moved in town and she wanted to have a piece of that as well. So I was like, well, I never look at things like that. They say, do not brag. Like whenever you have something, don't brag about it because you don't, not everybody that will hear about your success have your best interest in mind, right? So you have to be careful about what you say you have. Like, that's why, you know, I like millionaire. Millionaire don't ever say that they are millionaire. You see, it's always the people that they, uh, that think that they have million that speak. People that actually have money stay quiet. They don't even talk. They don't have time to talk about how much money you have. So whenever you have something and you cherish it, keep it for yourself. Like stay, you know, keep your mouth shut. Don't, don't brag about it because the more you brag, the more enemies you create. The more enemy you have, the more people, instead of thinking, oh, I gotta get mine, they think I gotta get yours. 
You see the difference? Like they are people, like rich people and people that are successful think of, oh, I gotta get mine like that. But people that are uh, that are envious, people that are jealous, they want to get what you have, not what is like yours. They want to get yours, your piece of the pie. So you have to be careful on how you you portray yourself in front of your friend. So another thing is this. Uh, the young lady asked if she should tell her best friend that she's pregnant by her husband. Uh, the advice that some of the elders were able to give was that no, it's that the man, because he's the one that created all these chaos, he's supposed to be the one informing his wife, not the best friend. Because by trying to go there, she might get stabbed, she might get killed, something might happen. Not every woman, like, it, it would take a lot from that you know, woman to retain herself from the fact that her best friend slept with her husband and got pregnant. It would take her, so you do not do that. If you want to die, you go ahead and do it. But you should let your husband be a man and take and take care of his responsibility. He has to just walk to his wife and he knows how he will handle it. It's not your problem, even though you created it. That is a man's job to take his responsibility in hand and inform his wife of what is going on and they can all sit together. But what uh, the elders recommend is now that you did something like that, that is bad. You do not go in front of your wife and say, oh, I did this and I have a baby. Because if it was just, you know, they slept together or whatever, like, yeah, you can arrange it with your wife. But once there's a baby in question, you have to bring your mother, your 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 in-laws, and your parent to sit down to inform your wife and decide of what you guys want to do. You cannot do it by yourself because, at least from the Bantu tradition, he cannot do it by himself. So he has to bring the in-laws and his own parent, ask for forgiveness, and they will see if the woman still wants to remain married to him or if she wants a divorce. Like, that is how they usually set a problem back home. You know, they, they will give a woman the choice to decide on what she wants to do because this is, uh, this is very, very bad. Now, I hope through that story, you understand why you have to be careful of the people you choose as your friends. They are, you have, Different kind of friends. You have people that want, you have friends that want what you have. You have friends that want to kill you because they don't want to see you succeed. They don't want what you have. They just want to kill you. They, they say, if you are, why, why are they not shining when you are? So they decide to harm you. They are not trying to get what you have. They just don't want to see you succeed. If their life isn't going well, they don't want your life to go well. So they just don't want to see you succeed. You have to be careful of those people. You have to know and uh, learn how to identify your own friends. You have to know how to limit your circle. You have to know that it is better to have one friend that you can rely on than have hundreds of friends that do not have your best interest in heart. You have to be careful. Be careful of the people you choose as your friend because they are the same one that will harm you. That is the lesson of the day. That being said, let's go to a quote of the day. Yo, boss, where is the commercial? We ain't got none. We got to work harder. Still ain't got no commercial and we have to work harder. So yeah, uh, that being said, Here's how the quote of the days goes, right? And since today is about, it's all about friendship, so I thought that it would be better to kind of, uh, talk about, you know, a quote that might relate a little bit to, to friendship, you know? And remember, the whole podcast of today is to let you understand that you need to be careful of who you choose as your friends right and that being said here's how the quote of the day goes it goes as oh that will be redundant of repeating myself but here's how the quote of the day goes man so even the lion the king of the forest protect himself against fly even the lion the king of the forest protect himself against fly 
that actually come from Ghana, ladies and gentlemen. You know, this is cultural awareness. So we're taking our quote from all over the place. So, you know, even the lion, the king of the forest, protect himself against the flies. What does that tell you? You have to be careful. Like, whoever you choose to walk with and road with, you know, you have to be careful. You have to protect yourself because at any time, they can always flip on you, right? So that is the quote of the day, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you very much for everybody that is leaving comment on my podcast, whether it's on Facebook, on YouTube, no, uh, what am I saying? On, uh, on iHeartRadio, on Amazon, on, uh, the uh, uh, Spreaker, uh, like many places I'm on everywhere, on iTunes. Uh, podcast on Apple Podcasts, you know, so I'm on Google Podcasts, so I'm pretty much on any podcast. You shouldn't miss this show. If it, this is your first time, thank you. Feel free to leave a comment, man. I will really appreciate it. And that being said, I will have to see you on the next episode. I'm not Dr. Dre, but peace. Thanks, Steph.